The way everyone here is dressed is super unique. I could see everyone's got something orange on the skin. What is that? It's a Today, we're leaving Namibia's capital of Windhoek, saying goodbye to modern day conveniences and heading out into the unknown. Far from any city, deep in Namibia's semi-arid desert, you'll find a way of life dating back thousands of years that's still going strong today. Oh, there's a lot of ladies here. The life. Can I put my hand up like this? Uh -huh. Of the Himba people. Today, I'm taking on the impossible mission to blend in. My aim, do what they do and eat what they eat. Even if that means snacking on a creature I have never seen before. Do you eat it dry? We're digging deep, getting an up close look at one of the world's most unique ways of living and eating. In a moment, he's gonna hold this up. He's gonna look at it and interpret it. And that's gonna indicate something for the future. <laughs> This is Namibia, and this is life with the Himba people. Good morning from Namibia. Right now we are in one of the most remote locations anywhere in the world, and we've come here to meet the Himba people. I'm here with Uno, and she's gonna walk me through the entire process. Uno, good morning. Morning, how are you? I'm, ja I'm jacked up. I'm pumped. I can see. <laughs> yeah. Before we go in, can you tell me what is the plan for today? We are going to take the sheep from the crown, then we'll slaughter it. Wow, and that's gonna be the meal today? Yes. Is this something they eat often? It's only for a time being, like when they are getting their first period, or when there's weddings and celebrations. Did you say when they get their first period? Yeah. Okay, I still haven't gotten mine. I'm 35. Do you know when it happens? From, from, from 13 to 14. Oh, I missed it completely. So right now, we are entering the village for the first time to meet everybody here. Can I put my hand up like this? Say hi. Nope. No. I've met the Dani people of West Papua. Wah, wah, wah. The Nine. Maasai people of Kenya. Nine. Cultures that have carried on traditions from long ago. In every case, it's always best to learn some ground rules first. What should I do and what should I not do? Food. In order to be a proper, polite guest. Okay, he's pretending to kill me. Okay, before you enter in the village, there's the traditional greetings that you have to greet them. Okay. Moro. Moro. Perivi. Perivi. Nawa. Nawa. Yes. All right, that's pretty easy to remember. N Noru? Okay. Yeah, what do I do? You can start with her. One by one, greet yes. everyone. Maru. Moro. Porevi. Nawa. Na Nawa. Moro. Moru. Perivi. Nawa. Nawa. <laughs> Moro. I think I'm nailing it. Moro. Moro. Perivi. Nawa. <laughs> Moru, the Himba people are native to Namibia with an estimated population of about 50,000. I hear the baby. Moru, baby, Nawa. Mostly living in the north and the other side of the Kunene River in southern Angola. The Himba are considered the last nomadic people of Namibia. Nomadic life means moving frequently in order to provide greener pastures to the tribe's most valuable possession, their livestock. The animals are penned in the middle, where they're protected from predators and surrounded by homes made of branches, mud, and cow dung. Where we are right now is a village of 30, mostly women, kids, and two guys. Moru, Perivi, Nawa. Am I one of you now? What do I do? Oh, come back? Okay. I think that went pretty well. Okay. Yeah? What yeah. do you think? Yeah, I think so. Hey. Out here, food is always made from scratch. So when I heard my host will be preparing a feast, I knew there was only one possible food on the menu. The 
Pemba people are predominantly livestock farmers who breed fat-tailed sheep and goats. Since dollars don't count for much here, cattle are the true measure of wealth. More cattle means you're more ballin'. It means more wives, too. This is the first time I've seen a slaughter in this way. They actually just suffocate the sheep. Mm -hmm. Why do they do it that way? Because they like it when the blood is too much in the body. That's fascinating. I've never tried any meat prepared in this way. The next step is that he will open it. Then he will take out the things of inside. Then he's going to read it. Oh, OK. Great. Let's do it. When you say he's going to read it, what is he reading for? According to their culture, he will say that something good that is about to come. He will even say that this afternoon you will not leave. Holy shit. It's not telling my future. Whose future is he telling? He still doesn't know. Could it be about me? I hope so. I, I hope not. Oh, Kalundunga. Okay, this is the houses where we are right now. From where they are coming till here, everywhere, it's where he's pointing. Wow, so he's saying kind of the sinew and tissue inside the goat is like a map. There will be a person that will pass away, but I think it will be a prime minister. Where I see it, there will be a person that will die in a car accident. But for the white people, here it is, it's all well. Is everything okay for the black people too though? Yeah. So, they can tell the future. But apparently, they can also take it back if they want to. Everything is well, they are full. This car accident will even not happen anymore. So, everything is good. Wow. Yeah. Mostly, this ritual is performed in order to urge young women to get married. What about the Prime Minister? Can we bring him back? Yeah, the Prime Minister even will bring him back. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> The meat is chopped into pieces, and the whole animal is cooked simply in two pots of boiling water. Add a little bit of salt, and that's it. Lunch preparation is underway right now. We have the sheep going, but today it's not just about the sheep, because there's some other side dishes. <laughs> Including this. It looks like a caterpillar right here. What is this called? Mopani worms. Where do they find these? On Mopani trees. Oh. Yeah. That makes sense. So they take it off, then they put it in the sun for it to get dry. Right, because this is super just dry and crispy already, but they're about to cook it anyways. Yes. Do you eat these uh, like this? Do you, do you eat it dry? Oh, how do you say it? Yummy. My chata. My chata? Yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> should I try one? Maybe we should all cheers. Ding. How does it taste? It tastes like a gluten-free food. <laughs> it's good, yeah. but something's a little off. Yeah. <laughs> Crunchy, no strong taste to it though. Maybe just a little earthy. Yeah. I kind of like it. That's not bad. If you can get over the look of it and the idea that you're eating a dehydrated, rehydrated fried worm, then you'll realize the Mopani worm is an excellent source of protein and nutrition. It's also a whole new world of textures. The Himba people normally boil it in hot water, then fry it and add salt. Then it's eaten with their staple carbohydrate, porridge. And even better than that, sitting and snacking next to me is the queen lady of the village. I'm feeling pretty lucky right now. How you doing? You hungry? So this is kind of freshly fried. It's still warm. Worm. Yeah. Porridge. porridge. Oh. Oh. That's a good combo. That could be a new flavor of Doritos <laughs> chips. Yeah. <laughs> so the porridge itself, it gets super thick and it's almost just like mashed potatoes or something. She's like, <laughs> she's like shut up and eat. <laughs> oh. You eat the mopani worm? Yes. Mm. It's actually good. It's like fried chicken skin. So I want to ask some questions. Okay. I noticed in the village so far, mm -hmm. several women, two guys. Where are all the guys at? As far as I can see, women tend to perform more labor-intensive work than men. 
They carry the water. They collect the firewood. They also take care of cooking and watching after the children. All the while, the men are tasked with livestock farming, animal slaughtering, and making important decisions. Hmm. According to their culture, a man can get married with three or four wives. Three or four wives? Yeah. A woman can have how many husbands? And she can have only one husband, but then she will be stealing from her husband. But no one else must saw whether she's having a boyfriend. Oh, so she can cheat, yeah. as long as no one knows. Yes. That's fantastic. I mean, not fantastic if my girlfriend is watching, but kind of fantastic. Can I ask you this? When it comes to guys, what do you look for in a guy? What kind of skills are you looking for? What kind of... Uh... What kind of characteristics? She wants her, her husband to give her goats and sheep mm. and buying for her food and looking after her and her children. Where's your wife? My wife? Oh, I don't have a wife yet. I'm still a very young man. Look at me. Marry her. Marry you? But I don't have any goats or sheep. I'm not a great candidate. And I snore. No problem. <laughs> Cooking is underway, but while the meat is simmering and even more porridge is being made, these ladies get a taste of sheep that's been grilling on the side. This is some of the meat with some gravy, some meat juice, and then some more porridge here. Yeah. And they're kind of dipping it in there, right? Yes. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh. That's quite good. Check this out. I'm gonna go ahead and guess this is rib meat because I yes. see some ribs. Oh, look at that. This kid loves it. Look at him. Is that good? Macheta? Hmm? Okay. I'm gonna try it out. Here we go. Yo, that's fantastic. Juicy, meaty, somewhat tender. The fat's kind of broken down. Hmm. So I wanted to talk about the way everyone here is dressed. It's super unique. I could see everyone's got something orange on the skin. What is that? It's Oshidumba. It's okra and butter that they mix. Okra, like the vegetable? No, okra. It's a rock. Oh, it's a rock. So we'll beat it. It becomes like powder. Then they're going to mix it with homemade butter. Okay. These people do not bath. So how do people get clean here? The way that they are playing themselves is the way that they are doing their bathing. So using that okra in butter. On my skin there's a seed and charm. Never sleep. Never rise. What is the purpose of the Oshidumba? For becoming red mm. and for applying the hair also. Wow, it looks gorgeous. Like everybody is so ornate, but I heard that they also take a, a smoke shower. Yes, yes. Well, how does that work? Uh, they will just take the coal of the fire, and then they will put the perfume on top of it, then smoke around their necks, under their arms, and they will sit on top of the smoke. Oh, so it's kind of like a perfume. Yes, it's a perfume. So it's just a way to like smell good. Yeah. Can I try it? Under my skin, there's a seed and charm. Never sleep, never rise. Oh, it smells good. It's got kind of a sweet, potpourri fragrance to it. Oh. It's smoking, and oh, okay. You just right under there. I think the whole idea is like, if you're meeting your husband, you want to smell good. It's smoky, but it's like a nice potpourri kind of scent. Whoa, under each arm and the hair. This is remarkable. My turn? Okay. The first thing you gotta do is just... <laughs> just get it up in there. I think it's working. I feel some heat. It's kind of burning a little bit. 
So now we're doing laundry too. Ooh, when our man comes home, he's gonna be like, girl, you smell great. Ooh, Wait, yeah. oh. <laughs> she told me to. Okay, laundry's finished. Mm, smells good. Put it back on. This is an honor and a privilege. And you're, you're a stunning, powerful woman. Thank you. Okay, I gotta go up. I can't breathe. The moment is finally here. Yeah? We're all crowded around the sheep. Everyone's grabbing a piece. This thing's gonna be gone in two seconds. Yeah. Look at that, it's just been boiled. The fat's kind of broken down. It's nice and sticky. And now uh, some hair is here and there, but I don't mind that. Mmm. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. It's so simple. Yeah. Just some salt, meat, water, and thyme. That's it. Yeah. When was the last time they had sheep? Last year. Last year? Yeah. This is something pretty amazing. Everyone's husband over here, he cooked it. What does everyone think of the taste? I prefer Noah. Noah? Mm. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are there a lot of Himba people kind of protecting and carrying on their traditions in this way like we see here today? Yeah, there are a lot in the northern part of Namibia. They don't need a lot of money to live this way. Yeah. Like, what do they need to buy? Only blankets. Blankets? Porridge. That's it. Uh -huh. I want to ask her, like, if she had unlimited money, what would she buy? The first thing that she would do is buy her animals. Mm. From then, the rest she will buy her food. Mm. Is there some food that you don't get to eat enough that you wish you could eat more often? No, I only want porridge, mm. meat, and milk finish. No other food. The Himba lifestyle holds a key to our human past, a culture shaped by geography, climate, and necessity. Everything we saw today, this is kind of normal life here. Yeah, it's a normal life. They don't move away, but they're only staying here. And what are people doing here for fun? When you strip away modern excess, what do you really need? Clean water, good food, strong shelters, protective clothing. But we also need friendship, family, a sense of community, and purpose. All that is here. future, Himba populations will continue to dwindle and the culture as we see it now will one day fade. This is kind of dessert. It's a porridge mixed with this sheep milk. The very human urge to move toward what's safe, easy, convenient, and new is too alluring to resist for long. Oh, it's literally like feta cheese. At least on this one day in time and history, I can say I sat shoulder to shoulder, saw and experienced the true life and culture of Namibia's Himba people. For me, this experience will live on forever. Hey guys, how's it going with that quarantine? More like quarantine, am I right? Mm. If you're anything like me, you're probably stuffing yourself twice a day. Listen, we're gonna get through this. I'm not talking about the apocalypse. I don't know anything about that. I'm talking about this constant stomach stretching that we keep doing. But if we move forward, if we persevere, at the end of the day, we can call ourselves food coma survivors. Buy the shirt. And we're donating 25% of the profits from this campaign to Feed America's COVID-19 response fund. They are assisting food banks and helping people across America who are in need. So, it's a cool shirt, it's a great cause. Thank you guys for the support. From researching and shooting, to editing and mastering, 
our 10-person Best Ever Food Review Show team works hard to roll out the highest quality travel food entertainment twice a week. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting our Patreon. Patreon allows fans of the show to contribute a monthly sum and receive a load of extras like early video releases, private Q&As, and beyond. To learn more about our Patreon, check out the link in the description box down below. And if you can't give or don't even feel like it, that's okay too. <laughs> We're just happy you're here. That's it for this one. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace. Good?